Hey guys, I'm Jordan and you're watching Fixbook. After watching this video, your car problems stand about as much a chance as this laptop does against my hot lid. Now, make sure you stay tuned so you can see what happened to the laptop at the end of this video. And as always, don't forget to subscribe, like, and leave a comment down below. So today, I'm going to be showing you how to take a castle nut off or put a castle nut on when the stud just spins on you for like a ball joint or a tie rod in. And basically, what we'll be doing is we'll be using this special ball joint tool. And normally, the concept behind this tool is it's going to grab on the stud and you're going to grab on the knuckle or lower control arm and it's going to push up and it's going to separate that ball joint or tie rod in. Basically what we'll be doing is using this in the reverse and using its clamping power to our advantage. And basically we're going to want to grab on the outsides instead of the inside and outside. We're going to want to grab on both the outsides and then clamp down. That's the idea behind the whole thing. And by clamping it clamping down really hard on it will have that ability to remove or put on that castle nut. And for today's special project, you'll need a ball joint separator or a tie rod end separator, which you can get at Harbor Freight or possibly Northern Tools for like 20 bucks, a 19 millimeter socket with a 3 8 ratchet, and a torque wrench and the proper socket there to turn the castle nut for the ball joint or tie rod end you'll be working on. Okay guys, so I already tightened this castle nut, but don't worry, I will show you one that actually spins and I'll actually actually show you me tightening it on there, but I just want to show you a couple different ways to position this tool on a few different locations. And for this one, I've already tightened it, so I can't show you me tighten it again. But basically, if you know what a ball joint separator does, it, it gets in there like on the knuckle and then it pushes the stud out. So to tighten it up and to keep that castle nut from spinning, we're gonna do the reverse procedure. We're gonna stick it like this and stick it right there. And then we'll tighten this tool up right here. So it's grabbing the upper control arm and the knuckle and we'll make it squeeze that upper ball joint so that the stud will not spin. And let's see, you can make sure you're getting, I'm getting everything here on the camera. So we take our ratchet and 19 millimeter socket for the tool we'd go ahead and get it on there and then righty tighten it, tighten it up real well. And you'll notice you'll be able to go ahead and tighten your castle nut because it's not gonna spin on you. Now I'm gonna come down below and show you another position and I'll show you the stud actually spinning and I'll show you me using this method to tighten it. Okay, so now we've got this tie rod in which will spin on you just like a ball joint will. And I'm gonna go ahead and demonstrate how this thing's not just gonna go on there, it's not gonna cooperate. So, I'll grab my 17 millimeter here, and I'll righty tighten it on, and we're gonna watch here, that stud is just gonna spin. <clears throat> and without an impact gun, I wouldn't normally be able to put that on there. So, with this method here that I've figured out, we'll go ahead and just stick this guy on there, I'll tighten him up, and I'll go ahead and grab this guy right here, and here, I don't want to disturb the light, and I want to make sure we've got everything in the picture here as well. So, I'll go ahead and take my thing here. I'm going to just tighten this guy on here. And we can see the tie rod in moved a little bit, but that's okay. I'm going to make sure he's on there pretty good. It seems like he is. So, I'm going to go ahead and see if I can't already begin turning this thing, so I'm gonna stick my ratchet right here. I'm trying not to get in the way of the light. And we can see, if you can see the stud there, give me just a moment, I'll give you a close up of it here. So we can see our stud now, now that I got the close up. We can see I'm gonna go ahead and spin that castle nut, and the stud is not moving, so it got around the obstacle. And that's not normally where the problem occurs. It's normally when you've actually got this castle nut flush with the knuckle. So I'm gonna just keep on going here and I can feel there's a little bit of more, there's another struggle here. So now it's moving freely again. Now it's not wanting to cooperate. <laughs> so this thing just doesn't know what it wants to do. Now it's going on there pretty freely. So I'll just go ahead and tighten her up here and we can see it's wanting to move on us a little bit. And 
Oh, I can see it was it was affecting the tool there. So just make sure the tool's out of the way. And I can feel it tightening up there. Now I'm going to go ahead and take my torque wrench here. I've got it set to 35 foot-pounds because for the particular car I'm working on, that's what it's going to be. So I'm just going to get him on there. Oh, and I'm using a 19. That's what the ball joint one was. But this is going to be a 17. So just go ahead here and... Tighten them up. And I should be there close enough now where I can just torque them on. But I believe it's still spinning on me, so we'll go ahead and reset our tool up here and I'll kind of back off so you can see me a little bit better right there. And just loosen up on this guy. Make sure we get a good thing going. And I want to make sure this nut isn't going to affect how I've got the tool set up. And I'll test it out by just going ahead and trying to turn it here. And yeah, it doesn't seem to be affecting it. So I'll go ahead and just kind of tighten my tool up here just a little bit. Right like that, that should work just fine. And let's see if it'll hold 35 foot pounds. Oh, there we go. Wait, there we go. Heard it click there, so that seemed to do the trick. So we should just be able to wiggle this guy off now. We've got them on there, and that's the way you'll do it. I can also show you the bottom ball joint here. It's You're going to have to get a little more creative on the bottom ball joint Well, for this particular car. But you may not be driving this particular car, so you may just be fine with what you're doing here. And I'll go ahead and make sure you guys can see that clearly. And basically... This is the last and third position I'll show you, and I've already gotten this one tightened up as well. But you'll basically go ahead and work it in such a way you back the stud all the way off, and you'll fit it up around there. And you don't have to get both claws onto the lower control arm, but so long as you get one and this guy to where it's going to hold it in a position and the stud won't spin, that's all you need. So. Also guys, one more thing I wanted to add before you give up. For your particular application, I'm assuming most things are not gonna look exactly like this, but you could also try using a C-clamp as well, doing the same type of thing here. If you'd already started the stud, you might wanna try putting it right there and locking it up with the stud, and then you could use like a combination wrench to turn it. That may help. You could also kinda of try and get it in such a position like this and tighten down, but I mean, it's, it's looking like we're gonna be moving, but you may find a position where you can get it to lock on like that. So just another thing you can try for your particular situation here. For my situation, it's obviously not gonna work, but I'm sure there's many situations where a C-clamp would also kinda do the same thing here as the, the reversed ball joint remover. So that's another thing you could use. Well, that ends today's video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching guys and don't forget to subscribe so you can catch all my new videos which publish Mondays and Fridays at 9 a.m. Pacific Time, 10 a.m. Mountain Time, 11 a.m. Central Time, 12 p.m. Eastern Time and I will see you then. Alright guys and here's what it's going to sound like when it's running on just two cylinders. Okay guys, so this is the test drive for the two-cylinder Civic. And it's riding a little rough. But that's what you can expect from just two cylinders.